Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today I'm going to be reviewing my infinite agenda. This planner I had never heard of, as many of them that I review, until one of my subscribers requested this review. And I actually had more than one subscriber request this review. So I'm glad that I could get it for you. My infinite agenda, first I just want to say that this is their calendar year 2018. And their calendar year 2019 will be coming out very soon. They said in August. So you will want to be looking for their new one. Um, but if you just wanted to try it to finish out this year, they are 50% off right now for the 2018 calendar years. Okay, one thing that makes this company unique is it is a product with a purpose. A portion of all sales goes to support three different charities, uh, Charity Water, Days for Girls, and Sing for Hope. And you can look up on their website, which I will link down below in the description box, all about those three charities. And I love a company that gives back. So I really like whenever I hear about that with a company. Okay. First, you have your nameplate page, and I will mention while we're on this page, and I feel the nice paper, that this paper is 120 GSM, which is a really nice paper. You're not going to have any ghosting problems whatsoever. This whole book is pretty hefty. It's a weekly planner that's 304 pages. The entire interior is white and teal. Oh, so if you are a fan of teal, of that really nice, it just makes me think of summer and the beach then you will like the color choice for this planner. This is a little bit bigger than your typical seven by nine planner. The page itself is nine and three fourths by seven and a half. So the page itself is bigger. And generally seven by nine is measuring the cover. So it's even bigger than that because the cover is eight by like 10 and a quarter. So this is a little bit bigger than your typical seven by nine planner, which just gives you a little bit more page space to write. One of their little mottos is imagine the life you want and build it. And they say, what you focus on is what you attract. So they talk a little bit about this in their planner, manifest incredible changes in your life. My infinite declarations, they're gonna walk you through some stuff about how you can best utilize their planner if you want it to make positive changes in your life. Begin with gratitude, they talk about that. And then you have a whole page, today I am grateful for. The gifts in my life include, I feel so thankful for. When I think of my life, it is so incredible that. And then, so after your gratitude section, you go into your short-term goals. I actually love the phrases that they chose on each one of these because I think they're great phrases just to journal in your journal. If you need something to journal off of, this is something I would never think to just journal off of. Finishing the sentence, when I think of my life, it is so incredible that. But when you finish that sentence, you can't help but have your heart just filled with gratitude for all the blessings and wonderful things in your life. Okay, then they're gonna go in and talk to you about short-term goals. So here's kind of like what they're walking you through in the beginning. Gratitude, then short-term goals, long-term goals, wildest dreams, and your vision board. So here's your short-term goal section. I'm excited to receive. I am looking forward to the success of. It's so wonderful that. And like I said, I think these are great journal prompts. Okay, long-term goals. So they're walking you through their checklist here to start out your planner and set up for success. Long-term goals. Next year, I see myself. In five years, my life will include. This is fun. I see myself. When possibilities are endless, I dream of. So each prompt section, like this is Wildest Dreams, they kind of, they give you a little bit of guidance right there. So this is your Wildest Dreams section. When I allow my imagination to run wild, I see myself. My wildest wishes include. And I don't know about you, but as an adult, that's a little bit not really a free-spirited person. I'm more, I'm, I'm pretty much a practical, realistic, more serious person is how I generally am my personality. So this section really takes me out of my comfort zone. What would you ask for in your wildest dreams? But I like that they make you go there. 
because for people like me, I, I would never go there without prompts. You don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. I love that quote by Martin Luther King Jr. Then you're in your last section of setup and it's building your vision board. So they talk to you about it, they guide you through it, and then they give you these pages to build your vision board out. Okay, you have four blank pages there. Then you have a year at a glance 2018 and year at a glance 2019. So this is a 2018 calendar year planner. And like I said, they'll be releasing their 2019 in August. And right now the 2018s are 50% off. But the 2018, I think it's nice when it's a calendar year planner. They don't have to give you the next year at a glance. But I think it's really nice when planners do include that. Then you have your really bright, pretty teal color that is throughout. Now here is something that is very unique about this planner. First of all, your monthly calendar spread is only on one page. Then you have another page that kind of focuses on your accomplishments and goals and what, what you want to do that month in those areas. So your calendar spread is only on one page and it is a Monday start. I always like to make sure when it's a Monday start on your monthly that people notice that, like in Day Designer also, because um, it, it seems like it's becoming more common. I'm seeing it in more planners, but... People in the U.S. are generally a Sunday start monthly layout people. And so that is something that's different that you have to get your mind wrapped around if you're going to switch to that. Then that groups your weekends together. You do have the next few days of the next month, but I like how they put them shaded. So you can tell that is not the month you're on. You have a note section at the bottom and you have last month's view and the next month's view down here. But you do have to get used to the fact that the month, the boxes, are a lot smaller. Even though you have a pretty big page, it's a whole monthly spread on one page. They do leave a really big margin up top and at bottom. So your monthly boxes are pretty small. So you need to think about that if that's a need of yours. And here is what's on the other side of your monthly page every month. This month I am excited to accomplish these short-term goals. This month, I will grow closer to these long-term goals. And in my wildest dreams, I am looking forward to receiving. So those are the things they're going to ask you every month. Then we go into a really unique weekly spread. Let me show you the blank weekly spread, and then I'll show you the pen test and where I filled out some stuff to show you what it might look like filled out. Okay, so here's your unique weekly spread. I love the scripted font that they use. I think it's really pretty, that cursive font. You get your month at a glance up here, and one really nice detail is they highlight the week that you're on in teal. And I really like that because not only is a, a month at a glance, but it's showing you right where you are. You have a pretty big margin up here of a header at the top of both pages. So if you needed to make some notes for the week, some goals for the week, uh, you could definitely use that for something. Okay, you could make a little habit tracker there, draw one out, or a habit tracker sticker. All right, so you have a horizontal layout, but you only have Monday through Thursday on one two-page spread. Then you turn your two-page spread and you have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday get smaller spaces, and then you have an entire notes page for that week. So it could be for your like your weekly list, it could be your grocery list, it could be your meal planning for the week, could be any notes you need to keep for that week. So you have a pretty big space for every day because you have Monday through Thursday for the week here. Then you have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to finish that week there. And then you have a notes page. So let's look at how this is laid out. You have a blank space for every day. Then you have a today I am looking forward to and today I'm grateful for. So obviously those are supposed to bookend your days. You start out by writing, today I am looking forward to. So it makes you start your day in, in a mindset that is thinking of positive um, gratitudes, being optimistic. And then you end your day with a gratitude, which I always think is a great way to end your day. But that does take up a big space of your day. This planner is obviously not just for planning the events in your life. This planner is for also um, giving you, you know, the tools and the space 
to work on your mental health is what I would call it, you know, and your emotional health, your spiritual health, all those things and your goal tending. So they have built all of that into this planner in mind. It's a planner as much for your heart as it is for just organizing your life. That's how I see it. Okay, so every day are those two exact same prompts. Today I'm looking forward to and today I'm I am super grateful for. At the bottom of every page is a quote. Not just one quote a week. At the bottom of every page is a quote. And I love how they use that bottom section for a quote because it is way too hard to write on the very bottom of a page if all of us planner people know that. And so I think it's a useful way to use the very bottom of the page where it's hard to write. Okay, so how you wrap up your week, you have those same two questions on Friday. Friday is the same layout and the same space as Monday through Thursday. And then on Saturday and Sunday, you have a smaller blank space and you only have a prompt today I'm looking forward to on Saturday. And Sunday finishes it up with today I am grateful for. So they take those two prompts and spread them between Saturday and Sunday. Then you get another quote on that page. Then you also get a quote on this page. So this planner is full of inspiration, inspirational quotes, and constant prompting to be thinking about blessings, gratitudes, positive things in your life, and positive things you want to do. Okay, so when that week is over, you go into the next week. It is the very same format. You get a quote here for every week. You have a note section for every week. Okay, when your month ends, at the end of your month, here's the end of January, you have a two-page spread, and here's what they prompt you to do. This month's infinite winnings. Use this section at the end of each month to track goals and dreams that have come to fruition. These are your infinite winnings. Take some time to reflect on them here, and soon many more will be coming your way. So it's to think about your wins for that month. And I think that's a great thing to do. When I actually do sit down and do that in my journal, it really changes my outlook. It puts a positive spin on everything I'm looking at. And therefore, it brings about more positive things in my life. So you have a huge two-page spread. You do not have to use the whole thing, of course, for this month's wins. This could just be notes from the month. This could be journaling from the month. This could be, you know, goaltending from the month. You could draw a habit tracker into here since it's some really nice graph grid paper. It could be a monthly habit tracker lined out here for several habits or going horizontally. So there's a lot you could do with those pages. Then you get your two teal pages in between the month and then you start February and it looks the same. I am going to go ahead and show you where I did a pen test in here. And I went ahead and skipped to where it's switching over from April to May. I wanted to show you how the months switch over. This ruler does not come with the Infinite Planner. This is actually a get to workbook ruler, and it is actually my favorite ruler for O-rings. You can buy it for $4 on gettoworkbook.com. It works in any O-ring planner perfectly, and this is an O-ring planner. It clicks in easily, it comes out easily, it's really thin. Um, I like to try to remember to show it with O-ring planners that don't come with a ruler because I absolutely just think it's the best um, ruler for O-ring planners if you want a ruler. It slides seamlessly, and like I said, it doesn't mess up your writing on pages before and after it because it's just super thin. And it is so easy to take in and out, yet it stays in. So it's just a great ruler. It's from gettoworkbook.com. Um, I have a whole review on the, her planner if you're interested in that. But if you just want the ruler, it's $4 there. I filled out some stuff in a week. I just wanted you to see what it might look like if I filled out a day. And then I also did a pen test right here. So let's look at that. I did tested all the normal pens, even, you know, flares, um, Aaron Condren dual tip markers. And here's what your pens look like on the next page. Like I said, this is 120 GSM paper. There is absolutely no ghosting, y'all. It looks amazing. They have used quality paper here and it shows. It looks great. And you can feel it too. It's a good feeling thick paper and it has absolutely no ghosting. And you guys know I love when there is quality paper like that with no ghosting. The type of paper they've used is not, you know, see through. So it's awesome. A plus for the paper. Here's what a day might look like 
Um, like I might write my looking forward to, I might write my gratitude. And even if it doesn't take up the whole space, that's okay. And this would just basically be my daily to-do list right here. If I had appointments that day, I would probably put them at the top and like highlight them. And then the rest would be my to-do list. So that's how I would use it. But with having a big blank space and these two prompts, I mean, you can really organize the blank space in so many different ways that works with your life. I also wanted to show you guys what it might look like if I filled in the calendar because I feel like that sometimes helps people. Um, I'm once again pointing out it's a Monday start. They do give you the previous month's day, but it's teal shaded out in teal, and I like that. So here's where I wrote in some of my real events for May so I could see how they would fit on a much, much smaller calendar box than I'm used to for a monthly. And I mean, I can actually fit it, fit it all in. I can fit about three events per day. And once you get past three events, you'd have to be writing tinier. I would probably actually, I didn't pick a really fine tip pen to write this, but I would probably pick my Muji .38 tip to be filling in these calendars and then I could definitely fit four events per day. So this was like a G207, uh, so not a fine tip at all. So I, I wasn't thinking when I just grabbed my pen to fill this in and I should have, um, I should have filled that in. I do kind of like it all being on one page in, in O-ring planners. I've said this before in videos, the big O-ring breaking up my monthly plans. I always, I don't love that. My eyes don't go seamlessly across and see really what my month looks like. Here you can really see what your month looks like and then you have your goal tending for the month over here. Okay, a few things which I haven't mentioned. They have three cover options. This is just one of them. They're all very pretty and muted, beautiful colors. They can look good in professional settings. And um, yeah, I already mentioned the other things. No matter what cover you pick, the interior pages are going to look the same. So every month you're going to run through is going to be the same. When you get to the end of the planner, I'm going to show you, you have some note pages. So at the end of each month, you know, you have your monthly uh, winnings page. And then you have a this year in review at the end of the planner. So record your reflections, realizations, and inspirations to carry you forward. And then you just have several blank pages, like five or six blank pages. And then now go forth and continue your awesomeness. Infinite winnings are coming your way. So it says, my infinite agenda was inspired in part by the following list of books. Check them out for some good vibes. And then you have a really nice back here, um, accordion pocket that can hold a lot. It can hold a little journal, like a sewn journal. It's plenty big. And you do get a band. You get a really nice thick band with your planner to hold it together. I'm impressed with this planner because it is unique and different to other horizontal planners on the market. I always like to be able to show you uh, planners that have a little bit different layout that are unique and different and this company certainly is and what they focus on. So I'm glad I, I had some subs that recommended this to me and I'm glad I could share it with you guys. All right, please let me know down below in the comments if you have ever used my infinite agenda or let me know what you think about this. I'm always interested to hear your thoughts. Happy planning, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.